This is JC Setting the Record Straight Podcast. I'm your host, JC. On this channel, we set the record straight. That means we fact check and correct commonly believed misinformation and propaganda. One of the early feminist writers from the 18th century was a woman by the name of Mary Wollstonecraft. Just to give some background information about her, she was born in 1759 in England. She had two daughters by two different men and she was unmarried. One of her daughters was Mary Shelley, author of Frankenstein. During a time that women didn't work outside of the home, she started her own school and was self-employed as a tutor. Eventually, she became a writer. Her most famous writing is a book called A Vindication of the Rights of Women. Wollstonecraft believed that there was a distinction between the private and the public roles that women were required to perform. She argued that women's private lives are what kept women subordinate to men in their public lives. Specifically, women were responsible for caring for children and running the household. According to Wollstonecraft, the roles that women performed as mothers, daughters, and wives prevented women from being treated as equal citizens publicly. She argued that women were not naturally incapable of displaying reason and virtue, but were prevented from doing so based on their lack of education as well as their social environments. By social environments, she referred to parental influences, the state of society, lack of opportunities for women, customs and habits. She presented another argument which is referred to as the perfect ability of the soul. She said that human beings have a duty to improve their souls and that the purpose of life is self-improvement. Therefore, by denying women equality, men were preventing women from improving their souls even though they would still be held accountable to God. She said that women are either human beings or they're not. Women are either capable of reason and virtue or they're not. If women are not human beings, then it would be rational to subject them to the authority of men. However, if women are human beings, subjecting women to the authority of men would be immoral, given that those women would still be held accountable to God. In my last podcast, I discussed the notion of feminine virtues. Specifically, Wollstonecraft addresses the feminine virtue of modesty. She says that modesty is not a virtue at all, but is a sham to corrupt and degrade women. She says that there cannot be modesty without self-respect. She says that feminine virtues are not rooted in self-respect, but are based on women putting the needs of men before their own needs. She said that the ability of women to determine their own virtue was undermined by the fact that their virtue would ultimately be determined by men. The result is that women were relegated to duplicity and cunning. I want to explain what that means and let that sink in. What she's saying is that because women didn't have autonomy to decide their own actions, women were forced to be duplicitous and to manipulate men in order to gain their approval. This ultimately takes away from a woman's virtue because she's not free to act of her own volition. In public, where women have no power, women would be civil and political slaves. But in private, where they do have power, they would become tyrants. She says that on one hand, men expected women to raise and educate children on the other hand, women were expected to be submissive and to not exercise any independent judgment. According to her, this is a contradiction. Back then, the only virtues that women could possess were modesty, submission, and obedience. Yet, they were still responsible for inculcating children with all of the other virtues. It would be impossible for women to teach their own children virtue if they did not possess those virtues themselves. As such, educating women was essential 
in order for them to carry out their roles as primary caretakers. She says that by denying women the opportunity to receive a proper education, men were effectively preventing women from carrying out their maternal duties, which would cause these women to be held accountable by God. She says that the power of self-improvement and of discerning truth is inherent in every individual. It is what connects each individual to God and must be the same for men and women. She says that women cannot be virtuous if they are expected to give blind obedience to the authority of men. A person can only be virtuous if he or she is free to act upon his or her own judgment. To read the quote that you all see in the picture, she says, it is vain to expect virtue from women till they are in some degree independent of men. Nay, it is vain to expect the strength of natural affection which would make them good wives and mothers. Whilst they are absolutely dependent on their husbands, they will be cunning, mean, and selfish. Unless a woman has autonomy, any virtue that she displays would be an act of hypocrisy. Even their affections for their husbands wouldn't be genuine. She says that so long as women are subjugated to men, there could be no true friendships or love between men and women. So long as women submit to the authority of men, it is unlikely that women will have enough self-respect for themselves or command sufficient respect from men to make reciprocity a genuine possibility. The relationships would always be one-sided. So she doesn't really present any solutions. What she basically says is that although women are capable of being virtuous and capable of reason, their bodies prevented them from doing so. In the private sphere, they would always be relegated to raising children, which would ultimately prevent them from having equality in a public sphere. Back then, the only way that women could have some autonomy is if they hired servants to raise their children. It doesn't seem that she ever considered the possibility of men and women sharing the role of caretakers. It doesn't seem that she thought it was possible for women to have full equality, but she at least wanted women to have the opportunity to become educated and to exercise judgment within their own homes. Thanks for your support. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Also, don't forget to hit the notification bell so that you will know when I upload new content.